exiting via slip and slide. <laughs> That's awesome. It's time for some more XKCD. Specifically, what if we put a pool on the moon? That's where all the spent nuclear fuel should go. Makes sense. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some not. Let's see. This question comes from Kim, who asks, what if there were a lake on the Ooh, moon? Lake. What would it be like to swim in it? Presuming that it's sheltered in a regular atmosphere in some giant dome or something. <laughs> this would be so cool. One of it means that literally. I honestly think swimming on the moon is cool enough that it gives us a pretty good reason to go to the moon in the first place. <laughs> At the very least, it's better than the one Kennedy gave. Floating would feel about That's the same on the moon as on Earth, since how high in the water you float depends only on your body's density compared to the waters and not the strength of gravity. Swimming underwater would also feel pretty similar. The inertia of the water is the main source of drag when swimming, and inertia is a property of matter which is independent of gravity. Huh? The top speed of a submerged swimmer would be about the same on the moon as here, about 2 meters per second. Everything else would be different and way cooler. The waves would be bigger, the splash fight's more intense. <laughs> yes. I will say about floating, you might still have an easier time just because the gravity is less and that you'd simply just feel lighter, even though, even though, like you said, your density relative to the water is unchanged. The same with the top speed, it would just be less effort would be involved, but it would still be the same. The waves would be bigger, the splash fight's more intense, and swimmers would be able to Better jump out of the effects. water like dolphins. Calculating the height a swimmer can jump out of the water requires taking several different things into account, but the bottom line is that a normal swimmer on the moon could probably launch themselves a full meter out of the water. An Olympic swimmer like Michael Phelps might manage two or three meters. The numbers get even more exciting when we introduce fins. Swimmers wearing monofins can exceed three meters per second, which is fast enough for some pretty impressive jumps even on Earth. Oh, yeah. Data on fin swim top speeds and thrusts suggests that on the moon, a champion fin swimmer could probably launch themselves as high as four or five meters into the air. What's interesting though is say if this pole and this pressure dome vessel structure sprung a leak onto the lunar surface, it would flash boil because the moon is at a near vacuum pressure. And what's interesting is the remaining water that's present in the leak would lose heat so quickly due to sublimation and the moon's cold surface temperatures would turn into ice. So that's interesting. Unless this happened to be part of the moon that was in pure sunlight and that's been there for a while, then it would boil and then it would boil and it wouldn't freeze because it can get well over for 100 degrees Celsius, not to mention with that same extremely low pressure. In other words, on the moon, you could conceivably do a high dive in reverse. And it gets even better. A 2012 paper concluded that while humans can't run on the surface of water on Earth, they might just barely be able to do so on the moon. Now that's interesting, because yeah, the surface tension would dominate due to this reduced gravity. You're gonna have some funky looking wave and ripple patterns too. Then we get to waves and splashes. Because of the reduced gravity on the moon, the water would be launched upwards much more easily, just mm -hmm. like the swimmers. The result would be larger waves and more flying droplets. In technical terms, a pool on the moon would be more splashy. <laughs> to avoid splashing all the water technical out, term. you'd want to design the deck so the water drains quickly back into the pool. You could just make the rim higher, yeah. but then you'd spoil one of the key joys of a pool on the moon, exiting via slip and slide. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, should we store spent fuel here? I mean, obviously you're going to have nuclear power plants on the moon at this point, so <laughs> got to know where to put the spent fuel, right? Now, it actually does have some advantages. One is the geological stability. The whole geological concerns of placing spent fuel in dry casks on the surface in a repository, you don't really need to worry about that too much on the moon because there's no groundwater, no tectonic activity. So this enclosure with a pool, I'm assuming the pool's going to be slightly under the ground. You're not going to have to worry about earthquakes, or I guess moonquakes. It's far away from Earth, so radiological releases affecting large populations, not a thing. And challenges, obviously, transporting it to the moon. So we're going to assume this is for nuclear reactors that are on the moon for a lunar civilization. <laughs> and you would need 
strict containment protocols that would take this reduced gravity into account. So like these big splashies and slip and slides. No, you don't want to do a slip and slide with nuclear fuel, not even on the moon. Though you wouldn't need the pool to be any deeper since it's just a property of the water. Gravity is not really a function in terms of uh, slowing down the absorption of radiation. So that wouldn't really be a factor. And interestingly enough, as far as shielding is concerned, it would actually be safer to go a little bit underwater in a spent fuel pool on the moon than to be standing at the edge of the pool, assuming, at least by itself, from a radiation exposure perspective. Because the moon doesn't have an atmosphere, and you're going to need some sort of shielding to protect yourself from cosmic radiation and long-term exposure to radiation not from the nuclear fuel, but just from space. So you're going to want some shielding on all the habitation modules, but it's conceivable that you could actually build your habitation modules underneath this spent fuel pool because the water would block a lot of the cosmic rays. It's interesting. I 100% want to swim on the moon. If we ever build a moon base, I think we should absolutely put a big swimming pool there. Sure, sending a swimming pool's worth of water to the moon's surface would be expensive, but on the other hand, this lunar base is going to have people on it, so you're going to need to send some water anyway. And it's not really that hard or expensive in the grand scheme of things. A large backyard swimming pool weighs about as much as four Apollo lunar landers. We don't have any functioning Apollo Saturn V rockets, but NASA's SLS launch system is ultimately intended to carry about the same amount as a Saturn V for the cost of a few billion dollars per launch, and a private space company would be even cheaper. For comparison, the budget for the Summer Olympic Games is typically upwards of $10 billion. So maybe the next- There you go. Lunar Olympic Games. The one other concern I should mention about having long-term spent fuel storage on there is the moon is vulnerable to things like meteorites, even micrometeorites, and long-term thermal stress. That's the- that's- that's a disadvantage of- that's just another disadvantage of not having an atmosphere, is those little things that burn up in the sky doesn't really happen in the moon. Step, if you really want a swimming pool on the moon, is to invite the heads of NASA and the International Olympic Committee to your next pool party. <laughs> thanks so much for the recommendation, and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.